astrology lovers. My name is Corey Dowds by the Veda. Okay, so today I wanted to talk about the the natal chart of Bitcoin. So those of you who follow me on my social media or other things or follow these videos, you know that I got into cryptocurrency. Uh, uh, well, I started studying it a little bit <clears throat> around August of last year and then first invested in it in uh, September, basically around the equinox of last year, which I later found out was a very good time. And that's like from a, just a pure market standpoint, but I was using just purely astrological um, Muherta standpoint. <clears throat> and uh, it worked very well for me. And I, you know, wanted to share a little bit of information about Bitcoin and um, kind of like show you guys the natal chart of it, because, it, you know, once I started looking into all this stuff, I realized that, wow, you know, there's, yeah, there's a few people doing some cool stuff with astrology and cryptocurrency, but not as much as you might think. Um, one great video to check out is a podcast that was on the astrology podcast by Chris Brennan um, with a guy who's going by the name on Twitter, Cryptodamus. Um, and, and there's a really cool, uh, cool talk and like three hour long uh, talk about astrology and Bitcoin. And that's probably the best uh, technical breakdown of it so far, but no one's done it from a Vedic astrology angle yet. And um, he even mentions in there that, you know, he, has, he mentioned that it, it seems like it was tough to for Vedic astrology to be able to do anything with, with this birth chart because we don't know the time. And from his understanding, they just, you know, he only understood about dashes. But as a real, you know, I would love to get a, a chance to chat with him and maybe even have him on my channel. But there's all these other techniques we can use. So that's why I want to do this video to read the, the birth chart of Bitcoin from a Vedic astrologer's perspective. Okay. And just see what happens. All right, so <clears throat> this is the birth chart of Bitcoin. Now, first off, we don't know where Bitcoin was actually launched or started from. So we don't know the place of the birth of Bitcoin. This chart is being casted from London, and this is the most commonly agreed upon place that it was most likely casted from. But right off the bat, the fact that we don't know that the birth time of Bitcoin is, we don't know the exact birth chart of Bitcoin. This is a, this is a major reason why we shouldn't bank too much on this, okay? And so I'm an astrologer who, I feel like I'm one of the only astrologers out there saying like, we should not even be putting so much weight on the birth chart of Bitcoin. That's not how the ancients would have done it. There's kind of become this like, Ever since natal astrology became a lot more popular, it's become a lot more in vogue to just do that for everything. So when we talk about United States political stuff, everyone always likes to read stuff from the chart of the United States on July 4th, 1776. Don't do that. That's a total misnomer. The ancients would never have predicted governmental affairs like that. The, there is no birth chart for the land. The land was just always there. You do, if you want to predict mundane events, like predict political changes of regimes and governmental things, you got to do mundane charts. The ancient Indians and ancient Greeks and ancient astrologers already have a system for this. And it's about doing the yearly ingress chart. So the moment the sun goes into Aries for every nation, it will be a different lagna. And you cast based on that and you do a whole different set of principles and techniques for that. Unfortunately, nations or huge governing bodies or even corporations don't usually come to hire an astrologer like me. They don't even know about me yet. So unfortunately, most astrologers like myself are not being paid to, to figure out mundane stuff at all. So good luck with us trying to make an accurate pr prediction. Now, some astrologers we do do a pretty good job with mundane predicting just without even being hired or being properly trained in that area. But you got to know that like, you got to know a little bit more about the whole landscape of astrology and understand that um, it's just sparking up the wrong tree to try to just only predict Bitcoin off of its birth chart. It's just not a good idea. You should, it'd be great if we had, even if we had the exact, we knew for certain that this was the exact birth chart, I wouldn't be only living and dying by this chart. 
I would be using those mundane solar ingress charts for each year to see how Bitcoin will shift in different nations for the year and all kinds of things. There's all kinds of other currency techniques that we could develop out of that. Then alongside that, a whole other branch of astrology would be the Varshafal, the solar return charts. So I probably won't have time to get into that in this video, but uh, all right, well, screw it real quick. Um, like uh, you could see how um, 2019 was a building year for Bitcoin, but then in, yeah, January 2020 was a huge year for Bitcoin. Look at how uh, the Lagna for it was Pisces with Jupiter with all this activity in the 11th house of gains and, and advancement and increasing. And um, the year Lord was Jupiter and the, Varsh the Muntha Lord was Cancer, which is in the fifth house. Um, which is also good for advancing. Um, anyways, we're not going to... Anyway, so like Varshafal is this whole other way that you could predict the yearly progressions of any currency, um, especially Bitcoin, since, yeah, we have this all time stamped really accurately. So that's just kind of like a cool little aside. And then there's also Prajna, as I've been telling you guys, like that's what I've been doing, um, you know, when I just look when someone asks me, hey, what about this altcoin like link? Do you think this is going to do well? I'll just cast a project on my phone real quick and look for what's going on. And if it's a yes, I'm like, yeah, you should get that. And then I buy some of it too. You know what I mean? And then it goes up most of the time. Um, if it says no, I don't. And then, you know, whatever. Ideally, we, we don't, we're not right every time. Okay. But these, this does give us a lot of good, uh, good, good guiding principles. Okay, so now we can finally get into the birth chart. All right, so. All right, so <clears throat> this is the birth chart of Bitcoin, the alleged birth chart of Bitcoin, if it was launched from London, UK. Now, what's really interesting, now I'm just going to say again, I do think that this chart is actually correct, and I have not fully rectified it, but I've kind of like, casually rectified enough to where I feel very, very good about it. Um, what's also really interesting is that the first, the Genesis block of Bitcoin, you can write a little bit of text with each of these transactions. And the text was a headline quote from a London newspaper talking about the banks like being bailed out with $33 billion or something like that. Yes, it is very noteworthy from a numerological standpoint that they said 33 and that um, that number is really important from uh, the occult standpoint, masons, builders, blocks, genesis block. This prop, Bitcoin is was made probably by a, by a group of people and not just one, if you ask me, and probably by like a very influential behind the scenes kind of group because it was created anonymously. And, um, you know, if you look into the numerology, like, uh, this is not, this was not some new thing that was unexpected, but basically, um, yeah, so that little note in there about 33, like billion dollars bailed out to the London bank. It's a quote from the London times. So like, what's really cool is to me, that's an omen that yes, this was created in London or whatever the chart, the karma, of this is tied to London, you see, because of the fact that there was a little headline clipping from London added in there. Um, and it was also like a statement about how the financial collapse, you know, like that, that quote was also people interpreted as like a statement about the looming financial cl collapse of the dollar and why Bitcoin needs to be created. Um, now, what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is essentially a digital ledger system. So it's like, I bought this and I owe you 10 bucks. Tom owes 10 bucks. Like when everyone is eating at a, at a, you know, or everyone goes out to dinner on a weekly basis, they would create a ledger, maybe. That's actually all Bitcoin is, is just this digital ledger system. And it's decentralized. So there's no one computer or one banking system or government that controls it. It's just a network that all these computers have. And like every 10 minutes, the uh, block gets like updated or whatever, or the um, all the transactions that have gone on around the globe get updated and everyone can verify and see them. So uh, that's just really cool because the ascendant is the ascendant is Leo, which is a sign of a kingdom, creating a new kingdom. 
And the sixth house, the sun is going to the sixth house. The sixth house would be the house of ledgers. The sixth house and the sixth sign Virgo, which we see the Lord of the sixth is in the sixth sign Virgo, a double whammy of confluence. We see ledger being talked about in this, in this chart. See, a lot of people would look at that. Oh, the larger is going to the sixth. Well, that's a tough house. How could this be a good thing? They're looking at it too simply. If you look at concretely what was born at this moment, what was born was a new kingdom, a cryptographic hidden kingdom because K2 rules codes and hidden things and, you know, introverted hidden stuff. So yes, K2 is a major planet for cryptocurrency. If I show you guys the random time I first pulled the trigger to invest by Bitcoin, Moo was right with K2 on the Ascendant. I didn't even try it. didn't even plan that. Um, so yeah, K2 is a huge cryptographic uh, factor. And Leo is the kingdom, the Lord of the sun. What kind of kingdom is being created? The Lord of that is in the sixth house, a bookkeeping kingdom. You see a bookkeeping system, a ledger system. The sixth house is the house of keeping up with your debts. It's the house of debts. A ledger is what keeps track of debts. You see how like just obvious this is? I don't want to be critical, but I, I just think that, yeah, like a lot of astrologers are, are not as, have not done their foundation, their, their fundamentals enough, or they would have seen this too. So many people have looked at the chart of Bitcoin. Um, all right. So yeah, we know this is a ledger. We know this is a digital ledger because the Lord of this is Saturn and is going in the second house. And Saturn kind of has to do with, um, well, I mean, he's ruling Mercury in this chart and Rahu, it had, you know, like Rahu, the Lord of Rahu shows what, how, what we're kind of developing. And it's speaking to technology and innovation. Um, I don't worry, we'll get to Rahu Mercury in a second. Um, but more on this sun in the sixth house thing. Um, the sixth house being the house of like how we keep track of debts and, 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 you know, uh, stay ahead of our material life is showing that a new kingdom that sets that, that has to do with that is being established. What further sets that up is that it's with the planet Jupiter. Jupiter represents wealth. More specifically, Jupiter represents your wealth foundation, such as a currency or uh, in a land where everyone traded seeds, seeds would be the, the Jupiter currency wealth. In the future, when we all trade genetic information or DNA codes or weird Bitcoin microchip info as our currency, that will be what Jupiter rules. Um, Jupiter is uh, <clears throat> Jupiter is the wealth, but Mercury and the moon are the movers of the money. They're the vices, the merchants, the merchant caste is Mercury and moon, okay? They are the traders. If you want to know if you should be a day trader, that's one, start, one thing to start with is if you're ruled by one of those planets. Uh, of course, you know, get a reading from me if you want to know the, the, de the full details. But um, so this is what's so cool is that the sun, the log and lord of this chart is being delighted by Jupiter. And that's showing a, you know, a delight in the sense of a new, like a new thing here going on. And Jupiter is also wealth and currency. So we're seeing a new kingdom, a new ledger, a new ledger that relates to wealth and currency. And then Mars is there. Mars relates to mining, literally mining and coins. And, and so the actual, the birth chart of Bitcoin here created an entire new industry. And Capricorn is an earth sign which deals with industry as well. It created an entire new industry like it, of jobs, you know, of miners, Bitcoin miners and crypto, crypto, whatever, all this cryptocurrency stuff. Mars being exalted there is really showing that these miners are these people who do this work early on and, and you know, um, get the important computer software and, and all these things. These people that do all that unnecessary work that everyone probably laughs at them for doing. What are you doing? Trying to collect nerd money? All these people that did that early on is showing how much of a gain that would lead to. Oh, all the stellium of plants is in the sixth house in Upachaya, a house that grows and increases over time. 
we have seen this to be the case for Bitcoin. Um, the other really cool thing is that I learned this from Ernst years ago, like Jupiter Mars is a classic placement for, for wealth. It's a classic Vedic astrology yoga for wealth. Again, I love Western astrology and I studied, I just, you know, told you guys a great podcast to check out, but Western astrology doesn't know these avashtas. They don't know the friends and the enemies that are plants. So they don't even know that Mars Jupiter is a classic wealth combination. Look at JP Morgan's chart. You know, like look at all these people who have that combination and are just titans when it comes to wealth. Um, Jupiter is your wealth and Mars is logic and your fire. Like you're, you're just basically someone who wants to, who, who really wants to get that wealth in a logical, fast way. You're going to get more wealth that way, you know? Um, so we, we have the sun, the Lagna Lord of this planet hemmed in by this wealth yoga of Mars and Jupiter. And they're also his friends. They're also the friends of the sun. So the sun, although it's normally, again, Western astrologers might think, whoa, what are you talking about, Corey? But the sun is in a bad dignity in Capricorn. The sun is in a sign of its enemy. It's not actually a, a great place a lot of the time for the sun to be there. Um, and it's, but in this case, it's helped by its friends, Mars, Jupiter, and even moon is delighting the sun. So it's got all of its friends helping. That's wonderful. Um, that shows that this is a more consistent thing that will last, that will live a long time. The other reason that this, you know, this chart of this thing, Bitcoin, has a lot of longevity to it and is not going to fall apart in a few years is the eighth house has an exalted benefit there. That is a classic yoga for long life, for a lot of longevity to a thing. Um Okay, so you're starting to see already how perfect the Leo Ascendant fits for it. Also, the fact that K2, the planet of codes and cryptography, is literally on the Ascendant. What are the odds of that, right? And again, um, Western astrologers don't know, don't emphasize K2. They just, it's, it's baffling to me. And that um, what's really cool is that Robert, the Cryptodomus uh, Western astrologer, took time in that podcast to say what's weird is how much the south node k2 messes things up in the financial astrology and he talked about how right when k2 moved into capricorn was right in 2018 the beginning of 2018 when bitcoin collapsed like basically bitcoin skyrocketed up in late 2017 when jupiter moved into scorpio Scorpio is a place where Jupiter is no longer starved by Venus. He's expanding. He's, he goes up like 25% in his good karma points because he's in a sign of a friend. Again, these principles of dignity, I would never want to depart with these techniques in my life. If I could be given any other techniques, no, I have to keep these um, and the Jaimini system. But basically, when Jupiter moved into Scorpio, he, he became went from being asleep to sleepy, to kind of awake. And so that's showed how the collective consciousness just got really into this new idea of Bitcoin. And of course, Scorpio being a sign of hidden things. And again, relating to cryptography, cryptocurrency, that was really visible. That was really easy and obvious to see astrologically. And I was blown away when I started studying this stuff in September. I was like, how obvious is this? Oh my God, how is not everyone in the cryptocurrency world an astrologer now? It's been a few years, like you, that's, I don't know, that's just me, but okay. So when that happened in 2017, Jupiter boosted everything up, but then shortly after that Saturn moved in to Capricorn here and he starved the sun, you see? So you only would know that if you're a Vedic astrologer, but whenever sun is in Capricorn, it's his enemy. So once Saturn trans is in there, he's, he's with his enemy, that natal trans is going to be really bad. So it tanked it, um, and we can see that using the avastas and everything. All right, so, oh, a really cool point that they mentioned in that podcast that I would 100% agree with is that Pluto and Mars were aspecting the moon. Let's throw up Pluto. Let's throw up some outer planets real quick, just for the sake of diplomacy. <laughs> um, Pluto is is aspecting Mars. This is even, yeah, this is just so fascinating. The fact that Pluto is here in the stellium and is also squaring with Mars is speaking to the fact that this is a another crypto hidden underworld currency. 
And it's also fascinating too, because Bitcoin initially started out as this way to like buy drugs on the dark web and to do real sketchy underworld Plutonian things with it, you see. But it's also saying that the, the general nature of this currency has a, has a crypto underworld hidden quality to it. And here's the, the third point that I want to make about the Pluto Mars thing. What did I say Moon was? Moon is the movers of the money, the merchants, the actual day traders, the traders. So this aspect of Mars and Pluto on the Moon is literally telling us that in this chart, the people that move this around are going to be moving it around in crypto hidden ways, underground ways, not going through a central bank. You see, um, that would be an above ground way, doing it underground, underworld. Pluto always ruled the underworld, you know, um, and this just all makes a lot of sense. And, you know, the Pluto here in this uh, conjunction in Capricorn is, is talking about like the slow development of a new thing, kind of under an, a new underground shift going on in the Capricorn sign, which is, deals with the world. Okay, that's, let's just talk about that for a second. So Capricorn is an earth sign, but there's three earth signs. There's a fixed earth sign, there's a dual earth sign at Virgo, and then there's the changing earth sign at Capricorn. So Capricorn is literally the sign of changing the way things are in the earth. Capricorn is the sign of karma. The 10th house, the 10th sign is the karma baba, doing big karmas, being a what we call a mover and a shaker. Um, that's why that eclipse happened. I kept talking about, if you watch my prediction videos, that's why there was so much of a changing of the guards and so many big titans of industry and people step down from positions and, and et cetera. Uh, we just saw Jeff Bezos step down. Um, so all the stuff going on with Capricorn over the last year, um, there were a lot of returns and, and there's a lot of activity going on with the stellium, but in a more technical sense, think about what, I, what we've already learned. Well, wealth is Jupiter. Jupiter was uh, in Capricorn when this was created. So this chart is showing this is something that's going to change Chara, changing Earth, changing the Earth of Jupiter, wealth. You see what I'm saying? Like this is, this is a thing that's going to change the way that wealth, the foundation of wealth in the world. And it's an upachaya, so it'll take time, you know? Um, 12 years later from this time was last summer. So Bitcoin basically just had its Jupiter return, its 12 year Jupiter return where Jupiter went back to Capricorn in 2020. And that was again, why I realized like, oh man, there's no way this isn't gonna go up because a 12 year Jupiter return is always a wealth transit, right? Um, but this also kind of shows how like even the, the big figures, the big players, like these hedge, funds, ever since I've learned about financial astrology, the hedge funds, these advanced computer algorithms, they factor in astrology. They factor in full moons, new moons, all this stuff. Um, and though, yeah, when those guys saw this coming up, they probably also saw that this was an important time to buy and that this was going to go up. And that's what's funny is those guys are so big, they literally can move the markets. Even if they don't think it's possible, they could literally spend enough money to actually move the markets. Um, that to be able to do that has a lot to do with the signs Leo, Capricorn, and Aries, by the way. Like if you're looking at the chart of someone like a Rupert Murdoch or a Bill Gates or someone, you're going to see a lot of those signs active. Parashara specifically describes those signs as the big bodied signs. I've talked about this a lot, but the chart of something like this with so much going on with Leo rising, K2 and Leo, a stellium in Capricorn, moon in Aries, that's really telling us that, you know, this is a, this is a big bodied chart. This is a big body thing. This is a thing that's going to be big, you know, and make a lot of changes. So that also really spoke to me. Um, the moon was in Uttara Bhadrapada, and that is a fixed and firm nakshatra. So that's really good for something that's going to grow in sort of a kind of firm, steady way. But at the same time, like Bitcoin is very volatile, as we know and all, but that's that's also shown because of Jupiter, the Atmakarika, 
is in Shravana, which is a moving and unsteady nakshatra. So that does speak a lot to that. The Amakarika of this thing, of this chart, is in a moving and unsteady nakshatra. The Lagna Lord Sun is in Purvashada, which is a cruel and violent one. So again, that shows these cruel, violent changes you see, and Mars is also in that nakshatra. Worth mentioning that that is the star of assembly, of like gathering your uh, forces together and then, you know, striking with the force of a bursting dam, basically. It's it's ruled by the, the water goddess, Apa. And um, that kind of, that relates a lot to the way that stock markets work. Let's just put it that way. Like stocks, supply, demand, things have to build up supply and accumulate before they burst through with like water. So there is kind of a cool little connection there. Um, but let's talk about the Amakarka. From the Jaimini angle, the Amakarka of, the, of this chart is Jupiter, which again, wealth. Jupiter is about wealth, and this is a, a currency, a wealth that was created. The Swamsha is a really important, that's actually the most important sign from the standpoint of Vedic astrology is where your Amakarka goes in the Navamsha chart, and it goes to Virgo. Again, the sixth sign. So this is the chart of a Virgo Swamsha. It's a ledger. You get it? Like the soul, the Swamsha of this thing is a ledger, is Virgo, is a bookkeeper. It's a, it's a note taker. Um, yeah, so I just think that's so fascinating. Um, and it's aspected by K2. Aha, uh -huh, of course, crypto, crypto stuff, you know, and Rahu because it's a pioneering new thing and it deals with technology and all. And so that's pretty cool. Also, the moon is in the fifth from Jupiter and exalted. When the moon is in the fifth from Jupiter in the Swamsha, that's an authorship technique. And it's kind of funny because this, this thing became authored in, you know, the, the intelligence of this program is being authored. That, that's also yoga that is important in the programming world. Um, if you're gonna be a software programmer, not just an author, you'll have that yoga. So that is very, very interesting as well. Um, and another cool thing about the Jupiter Atmakarika is that, yeah, it's debilitated. Like, oh, that's not good. Well, it's funny because initially Bitcoin was used as a thing for not good. It was used for drug dealing and sketchy underworld deals, these Plutonian underworld kind of things. Um, but maybe it was the Upachaya quality, but this slowly is is kind of leaving it and it's becoming a more established thing which is kind of cool because jupiter was just about to move into aquarius a fixed sign this is why i was making those huge predictions that bitcoin's about to explode when jupiter and saturn move into aquarius everybody talks so much about the great conjunction but nobody like very few astrologers had a concrete thing to say this is what it means and you know if you watched my previous video about the planetary war all that stuff with the medical state and the narrative and the news and the media and the conversation. I, I covered all that. That's a very objective thing that you can't deny. Um, and then like the fact that all those people got censored and all that stuff. But then this is also a very objective thing that we cannot deny is, and that's actually why I got into financial astrology was because it provides an objective data set. So I can really know if I'm right or wrong, you know, and that as all astrologers should, should, be attracted to something like that because it's the only way you're going to know if you're getting better or not or just like imagining this stuff you know so <clears throat> jupiter being in uh in yeah debilitation in the rashi was not ideal it is with an exalted mars that helps to cancel out the debilitation and it is on an angle from the moon that's good, that <clears throat> makes it more capable. But we also, I checked the Vargas and it's it's kind of really nice to see that Jupiter is in its Mula Tricona in the D60 chart and still with that Mars as a wealth yoga. And it's also got an exalted Venus here and an exalted sun, but then a debilitated Saturn. I'm curious how that debilitated Saturn will play out. Maybe it won't have as much longevity as we think, but um, but three, like three exalted or awake planets in the D60 is a really good sign. So we know this thing has legs, you know, to go somewhere. Another thing I wanted to mention is about that sun being starved. Sun represents government. 
So this placement of the sun star by Capricorn, Capricorn is a sign of leaders, yes, but also a sign of the common man, the farmers, the village, like Saturn rules the masses. So sun being starved there is showing that the government, the elite are getting starved by the masses through this thing, through this currency. So that's actually kind of a uplifting way to look at this. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the Lord of that Saturn is, is stronger. Well, maybe not stronger than the sun with the, with his friends there, but it's also delighted. So it's doing well, we could say. Um, now let's talk about Mercury and Rahu. Mercury is the other merchant trader planet, you know, and, and him with Rahu means that this is a new pioneering thing. This is a new uh, thing where, oh, wow, like Mercury is under construction right now. So that means like, wow, there's just all these new traders are going to need to learn this whole new world, this whole new kingdom. But it's also just saying like, this is a new, an entirely new market that's opening up. The word market literally comes from Mercury. And we see Mercury is in the seventh house of trading. Mercury is the planet of currency and coins and, and all this stuff. Um, he's the earth element, like in tarot, coins are the symbol of the earth element. So Mercury has a lot to do with currency. And the fact that he is in the seventh house, the natural house of trade and, you know, buying and selling and with Rahu, a planet that has to do with brand new things that are kind of hated at first, but then maybe have to be accepted or embraced. Wow. Like that makes perfect sense for what this chart is. So yeah, this, this chart is saying that there's innovative new markets being created as a result of this and a whole new business world a whole new set of you know a whole new world being born um that's like part of trading in the public and all now what's really cool is in vedic astrology we have those baba yogas seventh lord is in the second house so the seventh lord in the second house is basically an interchange that says the public like trading is going to deal with resources second house second house is money you know just currency so the, a chart about setting up a currency that didn't have the second house involved would be sketchy or questionable to me. I'm really glad that the Lord of the seventh and the sixth, the Lord of actually more than half the planets in the chart is in the second house. Um, so yeah, this, and it's Saturn, which is again, longevity and long-term things. So this is a long lasting asset to possess, you see, by it being in the second house. Or you could say that, uh, this is an interchange. I'm sorry, I didn't say that. Um, this is a Parvatana Yoga interchange. The seventh Lord is in the second. The second Lord is in the seventh. I meant to say that earlier. I'm sorry. Um, this interchange is literally saying like this is an auspicious currency for the globe, for the public, the world, the seventh house. The seventh house is like the world, you know, um, and others and the public. And the second house is your resources. So there's this perfect little interchange going on in this chart saying that this is a long lasting asset that's gonna be good for the world. The moon is in the ninth house, really lucky. And it's waxing, growth, awesome. How awesome is that? The Lord of it is exalted and delighting the sun. Wow, really good. That's really good when you see that in a chart, any kind of chart, um, that's a really good thing. So it's showing this is very strong currency. The moon has to do with currency and wealth and waxing and waning and growth. And so again, it's showing a lot more growth. And again, with it being Uttara Bhadrapada, it's stable. Uttara Bhadrapada is ruled by the serpent of the deaths, deaths, um, Adisesha, the, the companion of Vishnu. Um, has to do with preservation, preserving the good, bringing the rains, you know, um, bring the fertility of life that makes everything go. And it's actually kind of an interesting uh, nakshatra because it's related to being like spiritual and materialistic in different ways. And I don't know, we can kind of see how Bitcoin could relate to that too. It's also neat that we have that activity going on at Uttara Bhadrapada with Adi Sesha, and then we have so much going on with Shravana three planets there, which is Vishnu. So we have like Vishnu and his companion working their magic in this chart. And also in classic Vedic astrology in the oral tradition, Rahu is also related to Adi Sesha, Anantasesha, the endless infinite serpent of the depths, the Milky Way. And Mercury is Lord Vishnu, the consciousness that 
is running everything. And so when they're together, it's considered actually more auspicious than the average Rahu conjunction. Mercury Rahu people are very experimental and they bring new things into the world as a result that Vishnu ordains. Um, so this is kind of a thing that's like preserving the goodness of the world and has sort of a protective Vishnu maintenance kind of quality to it from a vast standpoint. That's pretty, oh, a couple more Baba Yogas. The 11th Lord is in the seventh, again, showing major gains and abundance and new growth, 11th house things coming from trade, seventh house. Um, gains from trade is a simple way to interpret that. The 10th Lord is in the eighth. So it's saying actions done are hidden, are, crypto, are cryptographic. And it's an exalted Venus, so it's this whole new level of that. Venus is also ruling the third house, which is the house of like networks. Um, and the eighth is, you know, being in the eighth, it kind of created this whole new network of crypt crypto cryptographic people and stuff like that. And um, the fourth cusp Lord, which is the cusp of deposits and actually like has a lot more to do with day trading and stuff. So it kind of makes sense that that's exalted is a really good thing to deposit into. You see like the fourth house is deposits. Fourth cusp, fourth cusp Lord being exalted in the eighth is really speaking a lot about um, how valuable of a thing this could be to deposit into. You see, um, we see all this just from the from the natal chart. Venus being in Shatabishak. Well, that's a star of like surveillance, and you can. What's cool about blockchain is that you can actually survey all the sales and everything that's been going on on this ledger. So that kind of speaks again to the fact that it's a ledger. Um, and, and Shatabishik's also has a lot to do with like transparency and the, the hundred eyes, you know, and everyone can see every transaction with Bitcoin. So that's also really interesting. But um, but I think the coolest thing is just that it has a Virgo Swamsha in a lot of ways. The fact that this thing just really is a ledger based on the chart. And the cool thing is, is that that Virgo Swamsha wouldn't change based on the, the hour or minute or the place where it was born. So we know that no matter where, Bitcoin was actually created, even if this time is wrong. We know that Vedic astrology, Jaimini would have looked at that on this day and said, this is a ledger. This is a, this is a Virgo thing. This is an, an accounting bookkeeping thing. Um, and then he would see that Mercury in the very 12th from it saying that, oh, it's going to lead to something good in terms of Mercury and Libra, the market, free market movement. Um, all right, cool. Can't believe I got through all that in just this one talk. I hope you guys appreciate that have so much more I could, I will go into, like I said at the beginning with other techniques, this is just off the birth chart. And I'm going to teach a class on financial astrology as soon as I can as well. So you can look out for that and I can start giving you guys little tips and, and things like that. Also check out my Telegram channel, check out Eye of the Veda um, on Telegram and I give free, free forecasts and predictions and things on that. So subscribe to that. It's free. You can, and it's really cool because I'm. It ensures that I get the message to every single person, not just like, oh, like you subscribe, but you didn't click the notification bell, so you don't ever get recommended this video or see it. This way, it's great because it's a direct one-to-one -one communication. So if you want to get those updates, you know, check that out. Um, I've gotten a lot of good feedback about it. Okay, thanks, y'all. Um, I hope you enjoy this. Take care.